Hey, everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Pastor Mike Drotus, Bible teacher and preacher, and you've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. Today, I have a quick exhortation for you, and I will pose it in a question Are you ready? Are you ready for what is about to happen on this earth? Time is almost up. We are in the last days. It doesn't matter if you studied eschatology and end times prophecy for years, decades. It really doesn't matter now. We're in it. We are in the last days. The, the events that happened in the nation of Israel may have caught the nation of Israel off guard, may have caught America off guard, but it did not catch God off guard. In fact, God told one of his prophets, Zephaniah, 2,600 years ago, what would happen before it even happened. And we are seeing it play out right before our eyes. We are seeing the Bible. We are seeing prophecy play out right before our eyes. Let me share this verse with you. And I would encourage you to read the whole chapter two of Zephaniah, but I'll just read a few verses. Zephaniah wrote these 2,600 years ago. For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon desolate. They shall drive out Ashad at noonday, and Ekron shall be uprooted. Woe to the inhabitants of the sea coast, the land, the nation of the Cherisites. The word of the Lord is against you. O Canaan, land of the Philistines, I will destroy you, so there shall be no inhabitant. Then he goes on to say, The sea coast shall be pastures, with shelters for shepherds and folds for flocks. The coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed their flocks there. In the house of Ashkelon, they shall lie down at evening, for the Lord their God will intervene for them and return their captives. In a matter of days now, Israel is going to do a ground invasion in Gaza, and the place will be leveled. This will not end anything. This will actually escalate the entire world into a huge war. And as the world clamors for Israel to stop, we're not going to see them stop, but we will see an escalation. This is not Armageddon. This is not the battle of Armageddon. This is what Jesus spoke of as we read about in Matthew 24. Verse 5, verse 6, And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See, that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. We're not at the end yet, folks. We're at the beginning of the end, but we are not at the end. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Jesus is saying that these will be the beginning of sorrows. Where are we on God's prophetic timeline? We are in the beginning of sorrows. We are in the beginning of the end. This is what Jesus was telling us to be aware of. And he said that as they were beginning of sorrows, it would be like birth pains. As a woman is getting ready to deliver a baby, her birth pains become more frequent and more intense. We are seeing wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and famines happen at a faster and faster rate. We are very close to the tribulation period. We are very close to the rapture of the church. We are in the second seal of revelation. I believe that we are uh, we witness the seal of Revelation, the red horse rider, opened February 22nd, 2022. That was the day that, in, that Russia invaded Ukraine. 
That was the day that the world began to be in a state of war. And now we have proxy wars being fighting between two superpowers. We have a nation, uh, China, looking at another nation, ready to invade it. We have the threat of biological warfare. We have the threat of nuclear warfare. We have the threat of economic warfare and cyber warfare. We cast around the world, word World War III like it's something that's not very significant. We are witnessing the beginning of what quite possibly could be World War III. We are seeing the red horse rider ride throughout the world. Let's look at that in Revelation chapter 6. In Revelation chapter 6, John witnessed Jesus opening seven seals on the back of a scroll. Before the scroll could be opened, every seal had to be opened. The first four seals are the horsemen of the apocalypse. We have now seen and we are now in the second seal of Revelation. I know that this may disturb some people's timelines, but some of you need to get your timelines rearranged. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Not off in the future somewhere. He's coming back soon. And as this red horse rider that we read about in Revelation chapter 6, verse 4, and another horse, fiery red, went out and it was granted to him, to the one who sat on it, to take peace from the earth and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. We are seeing the great sword of war go throughout the world right now. Soon the black horse will be next. The black horse will ride. And I am estimating that the black horse rider, the third seal, will come somewhere in the range of late February or early March 2024. Severe inflation is in our future. A day's wage for a loaf of bread. Shortages on everything, shortages on fuel, shortages on food, shortages on water, shortages on medication, shortages on clothing. Now is the time to get ready and be prepared. Now is the time to start stocking things up so that when the shortages come, you're not one of those people running to the store at the last minute trying to buy the last roll of toilet paper. Now is the time to be ready. It's prudent to be ready. A wise son gathers in the summer. Our season is almost up. We're getting ready to go into a time of shortages worldwide. The black horse rider is coming. But as all that happens, that is not a time to be afraid. It is not a time to, to uh, hide. It's a time to rise up and trust the Lord. It's a time to draw closer to the Lord in your greatest time of need. Don't waste your time on frivolous things. Yes, stockpile on things that you're going to need for shortages, but draw close to the Lord now. Today is the day to draw close to him. Call upon the Lord while he is near. Reach out to God. Draw closer to him. Get into the Bible. Study the word of God. Pray without ceasing. Lay aside those pet sins that you've been living with for decades. Some of you have been living with pet sins, hiding it from the church, but still doing it because you think you can't get rid of it. You can through the power of God. Get rid of the sin that so easily besets you. You can get rid of that. You can lay that aside. You don't have to keep doing these secret sins. It's not helping you. You're not hiding it from God. Stop trying to fool people into to, to them thinking that you're some great, strong Christian when you're just a baby Christian, barely understanding the Word of God and barely taking time to pray. You're, you're, you're committing these secret sins, and I'm asking you, let it go now. Draw close to the Lord. Draw close to God. It does not matter what other people think about you. There's going to be, when the rapture occurs, there's going to be people left that the world thought was these strong 
Bible-believing Christians. They missed out on the rapture because they were fakes and phonies. They were imitating Christians. Don't be like that. Draw close to the Lord. It only matters what God thinks about you and what God says to you the day you meet him. Will you go when the rapture happens? We are told that, that when the rapture happens, it's once. There's not two raptures. One minute after the rapture, it's too late to decide to start living for God now. We are now living in, 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 in the last of the last days. The third seal lies before us. The rider on the black horse is there. Next is the fourth seal, the pale horse rider. We read, if we had time to read in Revelation, the pale horse rider, one-fourth of humanity dies. That is two billion people. After the fourth horse, the pale horse, comes the fifth seal, and then the sixth seal. The sixth seal is the rapture. We are so close to the rapture. We're just a few uh, seals away from the rapture event happening. Look at Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. Here's the rapture. You, you may be thinking, this doesn't sound like the rapture to me. It's the rapture. It's just John describing the rapture from the point of view of those who are left behind when the rapture occurs. Paul explains the rapture from the point of view of us who go up in the rapture. John sees the rapture from the earth uh, uh, and what those people do when the rapture occurs and how they respond. Let's read this together. And I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it's shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded up as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. That is a description of the rapture right there. Moments before the rapture occurs, there will be a great worldwide earthquake. The sun will be turned to black. The, the, the moon will turn blood. The sky will begin to crack. And, 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 and the earth will shake. And the rapture, the dead in Christ will go first. And then those who remain will be changed. And we will all go through the atmosphere. Of course, John described it as the atmosphere looking like it was being rolled up like a scroll. He witnessed the rapture. After that mo moment, the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, they hid themselves in caves and in rocks in the mountains. They were afraid. They realized that something had happened. They realized, some of them realized that they missed the rapture. And they said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? They realized that the wrath of the Lamb of God was coming. They missed the rapture. When the wrath comes down, we go up. We will not be here for the trumpet judgments and the bold judgments. We are removed. We escape. The rapture is the great escape. Are you ready? Are you born again? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? I hope so. It's no good to have this, this thought, I hope I'm saved. I hope I go in the rapture. Sometimes I talk to people and they say, Pastor Mike, I sure do hope that I go in the rapture. Change that hope so into a no so. You can do that today. It's not too late. You still have time. Today is the day to make a decision for Christ. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. So I leave you with this. Are you ready? You don't have time to waste. Turn to God now while you still have time. And keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. God bless you. I appreciate you. If you have a prayer request, please send it to me. I'll pray with you and for you. I would encourage you and ask you to please pray for me. And all of us together will get there. We'll, we will be ready when the Lord Jesus comes back. God bless you. I'll see you next time.